Hi, I'm Shelley Bell, the principal here at Godby High School. Over the next few minutes, you'll be viewing a short video that gives you an idea of what tracking student progress looks like in the classroom. The purpose of these videos is to help teachers better understand the difference between not using, beginning, developing, applying, and innovating. These all correlate to the new eye observation system. In addition, you can reference the art and science of teaching as well as a handbook for the art and science of teaching as we go through these videos. In this first one, you will notice that the strategy tracking student progress was not used at all. Okay, and personality is also a major function of the frontal lobe. Now let's go ahead and move on to the parietal lobe. Now the parietal lobe is in this next video, you will notice that the teacher does use the strategy. However, she's using at a beginning stage. She's using it incorrectly or missing parts. So she has come some ways from just not using it to using it, but still only at a beginning level. Okay, and personality is also a major function of the frontal lobe. So is everyone okay so far with the frontal lobe? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, great. Let's move on to the parietal lobe. Now the parietal lobe... In this next video clip, you will see that the teacher performs this strategy at a developing level. She has moved from beginning to developing because she is facilitating the tracking of student progress using a formative approach to assessment. And personality is also a major function of the frontal lobe. So how is your personal understanding of the frontal lobe and its specific functions? Let's go ahead and do a status check. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and move on to the parietal lobe. This next video will show tracking student progress at an applying level. This is key because this is where we expect most of our teachers to be performing. At the applying level, you will notice that the teacher does a good job of monitoring student progress. Not only is the teacher monitoring the student progress, but students themselves are monitoring their own, their own performance. This helps to make sure that they understand where they are performing. Okay, and personality is also a major function of the frontal lobe. So, how is your personal understanding of the frontal lobe and its specific functions? Let's go ahead and do a status check. Remember that a one is, I don't understand what you're talking about. A two is, I kind of get it, but I still need clarification. And a three is, I understand, but I'm not really test ready. And a four would be, I'm ready for a test and I can help somebody else. Go ahead and show me. Okay, Cheyenne, why, what specifically is confusing you about the frontal lobe? I'm confused about the um, frontal lobe and how it affects our personalities. Okay. So remember when we talked about the prefrontal cortex and how that's deep within your frontal lobe? That is where your behaviors interact with your personality. It's really what makes you individual. It makes Cheyenne Cheyenne. So the frontal lobe is what makes me artsy and musical? Yeah, exactly. It's what gives you your specific characteristics. At the innovating level, we're looking for a teacher who can use tracking of student progress to meet the individual needs of every single student in the classroom. This is tough because with 20 to 25 students in a classroom, it's hard to meet their individual needs. But in this instance, you see the teacher monitoring each individual student, conferencing with the student, taking time to find out exactly where they are performing, as well as having the students accountable for their own learning. Okay, and personality is also a major function of the frontal lobe. So what is your personal understanding? How are we doing so far? Let's go ahead and do a status check. If you're a level one, you do not understand what I'm talking about. If you're a two, okay, you sort of get it, but you need some clarification. A three is, I understand, but I'm not really ready for a test yet. And a level four is, I'm ready for a test so I can help somebody out. How are we doing? Go ahead and show me. Okay, Cheyenne, what's specifically confusing you? I'm confused about, I'm confused about the frontal lobe and how it affects our personalities. Okay. Aaron, why don't you go ahead and explain your personal understanding of the frontal lobe? Well, my understanding is that the frontal lobe is your characteristics. It's basically who you are, and That's it's what makes me who I am. Right, you're right on the right track. I want you to go ahead and take a look at this CT scan. Okay, this is a big old brain tumor in his frontal lobe. Okay, this person was a great, normal guy. Now he's got a big brain tumor in his frontal lobe. 
I want you to go ahead and think to yourself, how might this affect this person? I want you to go ahead and take a couple seconds and write down what you think in your notes. Just jot down how this might affect this person. And after 30 seconds, I want you to go ahead and share with your partners your ideas. All right, let's come back together. Jasmine, can you go ahead and share your ideas for our guy with a brain tumor? Um, I wrote that personality is a major function of the frontal lobe. So if that guy had a brain tumor, you said that he was like a pretty cool guy, he was nice. That might change who he is, so he might be like, I don't know, a criminal. <laughs> Okay, that could change his behaviors, right? You're talking about criminal behavior? Yeah. Okay, so what if I told you this guy was, who was the nice guy, now that he's got a brain tumor right here, he's now a serial killer? That would be, that would be where the major function in personality comes in at. Right, so this little tumor, it's actually a really big one, altered who he was, his personality. He was really nice, now he doesn't care, his behaviors are crazy, he's not normal, right? But what if they removed the tumor, would he be back? being the same guy that he was? That's an excellent question. Um, depends on where the tumor was and if they could remove it. Mm -hmm. um, neurosurgeons have a really hard time trying to remove tumors that large because now that they've taken over the brain, it's not like a little egg that's in between the brain, it actually spreads out within the brain. So they're really hard to take out. Um, but let's go ahead and revisit our learning goal and do another status check for understanding. Remember that a one is I don't understand, two, I kind of get it, but I need clarification. Three, I'm good, but I'm not ready to take a test. And a four is I'm ready to take a test. Go ahead and show me. Great. Let's go ahead and move on to the pride of love now. With tracking student progress, this is an element that we expect all teachers to understand and to be able to perform in their classrooms. Setting specific goals for student achievement and then tracking progress regarding those goals is one of the most powerful actions a teacher can take. Having students to track their own progress of their scores as related to learning goal provides them with visual views of their progress. Using this system of tracking student progress, teachers, students, and parents can communicate more effectively regarding student progress in attaining learning goals. It is my hope that by viewing these videos, it will help you to improve your instruction. The new eye observation tool is all about improving instruction which will ultimately increase student performance. If you have any questions about anything you've seen, please don't hesitate to contact your team leader or a member of administration. Thank you for taking time to view these videos.